Grad school is a term that we use to describe basically all education after undergrad. But just because we label it the same doesn't mean that all graduate degrees are the same. So today we are discussing the differences between a PhD and a master's. So the biggest difference would be the level of education. Now, depending on your field or your own professional goals, you may then want or need to pursue a advanced degree. Now, an advanced degree is any graduate program or any type of education that you receive after your undergrad. So it can be your law degree, a med degree, it could be your master's, a PhD, dentistry, any type of advanced learning that you're doing that does result in ultimately an additional diploma. Now a doctorate, and in this case we're talking about a PhD, so a doctorate in philosophy, is the highest degree that you can get in any given field. But ultimately, or the most important thing to get from that is, a doctoral degree is a terminal degree, meaning there is no other level of education that will surpass whatever doctorate your field is in. Now that doesn't mean every field or every discipline requires you to have a PhD. So as a result, there is a middle type of advanced degree, which would be the master's. Now a master's is an advanced degree that you would get after your undergrad, but technically before your PhD. Some masters are professional masters, some are research-based, and then some are even terminal, especially if you're in a master's of fine arts or the fine arts discipline, which means with that type of master, there is no PhD that is available in that discipline or field. And so that master's degree is the highest level of education you can get in that focus. But generally a master's is the next level of education you can get before advancing to a PhD. So an intermediary advanced degree. And again, it could be a research based masters it could be a professional masters or it could be a terminal masters meaning there is no phd option within that field the next difference between a masters and a phd is the expectation or even the skill sets that you are developing so generally when you are pursuing a phd program you are doing so to prepare a research project so of course you will be taking classes and there will be an exam or an exam process, but generally both your classes and your exams are all for the development of your research project. Of course there are exceptions because there's always exceptions, but most of those exceptions are very much the minority and generally most PhD programs are research-based programs. Master's programs on the other hand are a little bit or actually a lot more flexible. So in many cases, like I said, you can have a research-based master's, but you can also have a professional master's or a terminal master's. And the professional master's and most terminal master's are really developing an actual technique or skill set that can be applied to on the job training or job focused types of things. So what you're more likely to experience within a master's program is that you will take a few classes or even a bunch of classes and then be expected to create a final project of some sort at the end of your master's project. So this final project could be anything from having a series of syllabi developed or a capstone project, or a final art project or exhibition, or even a complete research thesis. So the research thesis that you would make in your master's would be a much smaller document or a much smaller project than what a dissertation would require for your PhD. And a dissertation is usually a requirement to graduate for your PhD. Whereas again, as a master's, you have a variety of different projects that will lead to you getting your master's degree. And then of course, a huge difference between a master's and a PhD is timing. Generally, a master's can be as short as eight months and on the longer side, about three years. A PhD, the shortest that I've seen on paper is about three years. Now I have seen YouTubers that have graduated from their PhD in two years, and I've heard stories of people doing PhDs pretty quickly, but those are very extreme circumstances that probably require a lot of prep work and other extreme realities that just are not very common. So generally for a PhD, you are expected to be in your program from anywhere from three years, to upwards eight years and more. So a master's is a more structured program where time degree is very much based off of very structured milestones that you are expected to complete. And oftentimes when you don't complete it, you're kind of dropped from the program. 
In a PhD program, there are structured milestones that you are expected to complete and can be dropped from the program, but it is way more common for a PhD to take a much longer time. And it can even last 10 plus years, depending on what your own personal process is, what your own experiences and support systems are to get you through the PhD program. A uh, master's will never ever take you 10 years unless you're doing a very particular special program that is like part-time that you can pace at your own time and things like that. Now, the next thing we're gonna talk about is something that I actually talk about on my channel very often, and that is funding. Now, funding in general for any graduate program is getting more and more difficult to get because schools are becoming more and more expensive. But the reality is when you're thinking about funding a graduate program, what degree you're pursuing definitely matters. In the case of a master's versus a PhD, it is so much easier to find funding for a PhD program in comparison to a master's. This becomes even more difficult if you are pursuing a professional master's, where again, it is not research-based and you are developing a skill set for your job. They also come with additional fees as a professional master's that often are not covered by grants or scholarships or certain types of fellowships that you would eventually have to pay out of pocket because they're seen as special programs or specialized programs. So when you are pursuing your graduate degree, it doesn't mean it's impossible to fund your master's. And in fact, if you are pretty, you know, proactive and looking for grants early and checking out my playlist on grad funding, then you probably will be able to find a couple thousand dollars or a little bit money here and there to support your master's degree. Now I will say between the three, research, professional, and a terminal degree, it's probably easiest to fund a terminal degree, middle easiest is to fund a research degree, and the most most difficult is to fund a professional degree, but it is so much easier to find funding, even if it's not as much as it used to be in the 1960s, it is still so much easier to fund a PhD program or to find somebody willing to support your PhD program in comparison to your master's program. Also something that I noticed from my own personal experience is that the pacing and the amount of support that you get in each degree can look completely different. For example, because a master's program is so short, again, anywhere from eight months to three years on the higher end, you don't have as much time to build meaningful relationships with your faculty or to think through your research project or even look for funding once you've decided what your research project is. As a result, like I said, it is harder to get funding, but it's also pretty difficult or it was pretty difficult for me to find mentors that I felt comfortable with or that would guide me through the academic process. It just feels like you move very fast through your master's program. So as a result, it's completely possible that you might feel a little rushed or lost or discombobulated because you don't quite understand what is academia or how to work in academia and your classes and the expectations are all coming at you very quickly. Whereas with my PhD, because I've been here four years and I'm going to be here a little bit longer I've had a lot of opportunities to get to know a lot of people in my department, to meet a lot of people within UCLA, to reach out to other scholars or support groups, or learn about the hidden curriculum of academia because I'm here so long and because I've had an opportunity to be a well-established scholar. And so for me within a PhD program, it feels much more like I'm doing scholarly work, whatever that means in a PhD because of the amount of time that is afforded to me to think through my project, to take classes, to meet with faculty. There isn't a real expectation for me to hurry up and graduate in the same way that I felt there was when I was getting my master's. And so that is something to consider. Conversely, on the other hand, there are people who feel like a PhD just will never ever end. And that can be a reality. A lot of your PhD is self-paced. Once you've completed your coursework and once you've completed your exams, everything after that is just you writing your dissertation. So if it takes you four years to write your dissertation, it is very easy to be in a PhD program for eight years. But if you somehow can figure out how to write your dissertation in six months, then you possibly could graduate in four years or four and a half years. So because of that, a PhD is a little harder to grasp the timing 
and it can go on what seems like forever if you don't have a good system on how to complete your dissertation or you don't understand the steps or have resources to do your field work so you can complete your dissertation in a timely manner. Now, understanding the differences between a PhD and a master's is just the beginning of understanding what graduate program is for you. So if you're interested in more grad life, grad advice, and research, don't forget to subscribe. And as always, if you found at least two things useful, definitely hit the thumbs up so others know that this video has good quality content. And as always, if you have questions, concerns, comments, or video suggestions, or just want to say hi, definitely leave a comment down below. Your engagement, sharing my videos, or just saying hi every so often really helps a small YouTuber like me continue to grow. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next week.